either. For a while I've wanted to make a quick video showing how you can look at Google Earth's imagery in different fields of view than the default, which is this view right here, which is at 60 degrees, and it starts you out at 6800 miles above the Earth's surface. Uh, over here on the left hand side I've got some fields of view KML files that I've downloaded and or edited myself to create different fields of view and you can set it from anywhere from 10 degrees on up to 180 degrees which is very distorted and not terribly useful but more useful are the ones below 60 degrees and if I click on one you'll notice that the eye altitude changes but otherwise the image stays the same uh, the default ends up being like 18 or 11,807 in these KMLs I think you can change that but if we reduce the field of view it's like using the zoom on a telephoto lens in a camera as we drop it down to 20 and then 15 and 10 degrees 10 being the lowest you can see that the field of view from left to right is only 10 degrees from this altitude of 11,807 miles and that makes quite a difference in how scenes look if we may let's start with 190 degrees and if we zoom into Salt Lake City which is where I have manually set these to point to to begin with compared to the normal Google Earth view now you've got a much wider view and in some cases this may be useful if you're wanting to make a nice screenshot say of a city from above like you're looking out of a plane or for whatever purpose you want but notice how the roads in the distance here converge All right, now if we change it to 10 degrees and do the same view or the same location, now notice the difference in the foreshortening visible. Now the roads converge much, much less. And again, it's like using a telephoto lens on a camera. and this makes for some very interesting effects and it makes it very useful for predicting what a scene might look like if you went to a certain location and set your eye close to the ground and looked out using a P900 or another camera with a good zoom lens because often the view you see is quite a bit different than what you're used to and the program can simulate that very well and I'll show an example here of what Soundly recorded at Lake Pontchartrain when he was looking across the causeway from the north side looking south and could see the Marriott across the lake half cut off because the rest of it was below the horizon and as you'll see here in a moment Google Earth can simulate that view pretty darn close and it makes it a good tool for predicting what you might see over your own lakes or across long distances. Okay, I've taken us back out. We are at 10 degrees field of view. And we're going to come down here and we're going to look at Lake Pontchartrain, where Soundly was recording at the north end of the bridge or the causeway. swing around and look south and already without zooming in to ground level or moving downwards to ground level you can see the two buildings in the distance or well there's three of them and from this eye altitude of 1,000 feet we can see the entire buildings right down to the ground but as we lower the camera down to where Soundly was. You'll notice that 
these buildings get more and more cut off as our high altitude decreases down to 50 feet, 40, 30. And that's approximately what Soundly was able to see from his location. That's 20 feet. Now again, Google Earth has no compensation for atmospheric refraction, so you have to take that into account. And since atmospheric react refraction always makes things appear higher than they actually are, you sometimes have to back the camera out slightly to get the same view you, you would from the ground. And that's dependent on the distance of the object, how far you'd have to back the camera out. But even when it doesn't account for refraction, that's still a pretty close approximation to the scene that he viewed from his location on the ground. And so, like I say, it makes a good tool for predicting what you may or may not be able to see as you go to different locations. It's what I did when I recorded my scene of the Black Pine Mountains from my shooting location here in northern Utah. Okay. So how do you get this into your own copy of Google Earth or Google Earth Pro? Well, it's pretty simple. The easiest way is to come to Google's main page and type in Google Earth Field of View. And the link you want is this one right here, using KML to change your field of view in Google Earth. When you click on it, it will describe what this tour method of changing the field of view does because this KML is basically just a a tour of one object where you set the latitude and longitude and there are some pre-made versions at 10, 30, 45, etc. fields of view and you can just right click and save those into the folder of your choice and then double click on them to open Google Earth with it and you are set to go at whichever field of view you choose now, what if there's a field of view that you would like that isn't one of these pre-made versions? Say you would want a 75 degree field of view. Uh, simply open up that KML you saved in a text editor like Notepad or whatever you prefer to use. And this is what you will see inside that KML text file. This up here is the name that will appear in the table of contents on the left side of Google Earth when you open it and you can change the latitude and the longitude of the point that it starts pointing at when you click on it and to change the field of view itself don't change this line I don't think it makes any difference the one you want to change is this one right here and make that number anything you would like in the center you can just make that 75 and then file save as and put it in wherever you'd like double click it and you are good to go. The last thing I wanted to show is another fun thing you can do with these different fields of view is make almost some postcard quality images of various cities and save them. And it's fun to do if you change the field of view to something sm smaller than the 60 degrees. If we come down here to Miami for example Okay, it's finished drawing this in, and there's one thing missing in default Google Earth. There's no haze, there's no, there's no indication of distance. So what you can do is turn on the Use Photorealistic Atmosphere Rendering under Tools and Options. When you turn that on, it's especially effective when you have a high field of view like this, or a narrow field of view. Now it creates a much more realistic 
appearing scene. And you can save this, especially in Google Earth Pro. Let me close this tour widget that gets created with the KML, the field of view KML. If you have Google Earth Pro, you can save this image at very high quality. When you go under Save Image, normally this, these are all turned on, but I have them turned off in mine, and you may as prefer it as well. When you drop down this resolution, in Google Earth Pro you can use 4800 by 3000 in this case. And when you save the image, it's going to take a long time because it is drawing every tile on screen all the way to the distant horizon at its maximum detail. So this is going to take a while. I'm going to put a quick cut in here and I'll come back when I have the finished image. Alright, so it finally finished rendering. And here's the final scene. I think that looks pretty good, apart from the trees that look a little more like broccoli than trees and the fact that there are no people and there usually will not be traffic visible but that varies but still it's a it's a fun way to get some nice pictures of cities so I think that's pretty much it uh, if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them as soon as I can uh, the next video I was going to do with Google Earth is showing how you can bring in the geo-referenced USGS topo quads into it and look at them in any of these fields of view as well and overlay them on the Google Earth imagery and how if you have a map that you would like to see on there that is not geo-referenced or is otherwise unavailable to be viewed in Google Earth I can convert that and do the geo-referencing for you and we'll post it somewhere and I will show you how to add an image like that as well. So thank you for watching and I hope you got something useful out of this and I will see you next time.